This is the Lumix S5 II and it has been out now for around about three or four months. It was released back at the end of January and it is a brilliant, brilliant camera. It has features that rival cameras twice its price in cinema line cameras such as the Sony FX3 and it is it rivals cameras that are more expensive than it in its same area such as the Sony a7 IV and the Canon R6. And it is crazy to think that this camera is so much cheaper and almost half the price of some of those cameras that it rivals. But while the S5 II is mainly focused towards the video side of things, it is still a great all-round hybrid camera and it takes great photos as well. So in this video, I just wanna look at the S5 II purely in a photography point of view and look at why you should maybe consider the S5 II if you are looking to upgrade your camera or just interested in the S5 II. The first thing I want to mention is just the way it feels in the hand because believe it or not that is one of the most important things when it comes to choosing a good photography camera. It needs to feel good in your hand because that is how you use it. If it feels uncomfortable you're less likely to want to go and pick it up and take photos. But this just feels great as soon as you pick it up. It's got a nice big chunky grip on it. All the buttons just feel like they're in the place they should be. It's easy to choose your photo modes with the dials on the top. You can easily easily customize all of the other buttons. You've got the joystick in the top right corner and it's easy to flick through all of the menu systems as well. Everything is just where you expect it to be and you don't find yourself flicking through menus trying to find things and getting lost inside all of the different settings. It feels very intuitive and for choosing a great photography camera that is very important because you don't want to waste time trying to find things that should be easy to find. Dual ISO is something that I just want to mention very quickly. But this is something that the Lumix S5 II has. Now granted, dual ISO isn't as important in photo mode as it is in video mode, because you typically can reach higher ISOs in photo than you can in video without introducing some of the noise and the grain that you get from shooting in a higher ISO. But when you're shooting in vlog, for example, you have a base ISO of 640 and a dual native ISO of 4000. And that just means that once you put your ISO into 4000 if you're shooting in low light you're going to get a cleaner image than you would typically shooting at ISO 4000 and it is incredibly useful when you're shooting in video. I believe dual ISO does also work in photo mode although I'm not exactly sure what it is. The ISO performance in this camera whether you're in photo or video is super impressive. I am actually really impressed with the quality of the lenses that you get with the L mount for the S5 and the S5 II. Now the L mount is the same as Leica, so if you have any of those lenses, maybe you have a Leica camera, you can use them on your S5 and your S5 II. But these little S primes are absolutely brilliant. Here I have the 85 1.8 and the 50 1.8, and these are so, so sharp, even when you're shooting at F 1.8. I took this picture of a red kite bird on the 50 millimeter F 1.8, shot at F 1.8, and blew it up to a two size, and it's gonna go on my wall just here when I get around to hanging it, but it looks so sharp it looks incredible it is one of my favorite photos i've taken in a long time but to be able to get an image that sharp shooting at f 1.8 shows just how good these lenses are now there is a full set of these you can get the 24 18 and 35 millimeter as well i don't have those but these two are super super impressive you can get some great photos with them but i have also just purchased this which is the sigma 100 to 400 f5 to f6.3 so it's slightly variable but it's uh 100 millimeter to 400 millimeter so it's a big zoom range and this again this is one of my favorite lenses that i've ever used i've got some really nice shots with that i've not used it that much yet but the few times that i have used it I've got some really nice shots from that. So the lens selection is growing with Lumix all of the time and they are all brilliant and they all work really well in photo and video mode as well. Autofocus is a big reason to upgrade to the S5 II, especially over the original Lumix S5. 
I am actually recording this video on the original S5 and the autofocus does a decent job. You might occasionally see it pulsing in the, in the background, but it does an okay job. It is a lot slower than other autofocuses, but all of those problems that you have with the original S5 autofocus have been fixed inside the S5 II because it now has phase detect autofocus instead of contrast based autofocus. And it works brilliantly. I have not had an issue with this at all. You know you can rely on it whether you are in photos or video and you're going to get great results from it 99% of the time which is all you can ask for. That being said the autofocus on the original S5 did work slightly better in photos for me anyway than it did in video. I felt you could rely on it slightly more in photo mode but again all of those issues are gone with this. You're not going to have an issue with the autofocus. It is so quick. Now this might just seem like a small, almost pointless thing, but the joystick on the back of the S5 II now works in more directions than the original S5. The S5 only worked sideways and up and down, whereas this one works in all directions. You can move diagonally if you want to as well. And that just means that you can move your focus box around much quicker than you could on the original one, which means you can therefore find your focus quicker and take your photo even quicker. And that's really useful if you're taking photos of moving objects and it just makes it more functional, more intuitive and easier to use because you're not waiting to use the joystick in a way that suits the camera. You can just move your box straight there. The monitor on the back of the S5 II is really good as well. It's one of these flip monitor, very angle things. I don't know what you actually call it, but it's nice and sturdy. But the monitor itself is really good. It's nice and easy to click through your menus on here. You can tap to focus nice and easily. You can scroll through. It's very intuitive. There's no lag, but it's also nice and bright as well. So you can see the display in pretty much all conditions in bright sunlight. You're not going to have an issue because you can change your brightness nice and easily it's just great and it's nice and high definition as well so you're getting a good image preview off the back of this screen but having the flippy screen means that even for photos it's useful when you're videoing and vlogging and things like that because you can frame your shot but even with photos you can get nice and low with some angles and just get creative with it whereas if you're looking through the viewfinder you're not going to be always able to get into those positions that you can use in the display so these, these flippy screens are great. Might look a bit gimmicky and feel a bit flimsy sometimes, but this one works really well. While we're on the subject of monitors and screens and viewfinders, the viewfinder on the S5 II is great. I typically don't use it. I don't really like shooting through viewfinders for some reason, I'm not sure why. But if you did want to use it, it's nice and sharp. It looks great, it's bright enough. You can see everything you're doing. You can again flick through your menus on there as well. Now it's not the biggest viewfinder in the world. There are cameras with bigger viewfinder displays out there, but it does the job really well. And if you didn't want to use it, you can turn it off just by using the LVF button on the left. The S5 II has a 24 megapixel sensor, the same as the original S5. Now 24 megapixels might not sound like a lot, especially when you get cameras coming out with 60 megapixels and you've got phones coming out with sensors with 100 megapixels, 24 might seem like a bit of a step back. But honestly, I made a video about this last week. Megapixels don't really matter in the same way that people think they do. It doesn't mean more megapixels equals a better camera. You can get some incredible results with a 24 megapixel sensor. You can get some really good print sizes with a 24 megapixel sensor. Honestly, you're not gonna have an issue with 24 megapixels. If you wanted to do loads of cropping, maybe you're shooting little birds in trees that are really far away, Yes, you might want something with a higher megapixel count because then you can crop in and still get really detailed images. But 24 megapixels, most of the time, for things like shooting for social media and getting decent sized prints from is more than enough. The final thing I'm gonna mention is the colors. And I'm gonna include the original S5 in this as well because there's something about the colors that you get from these cameras that just look incredible and I don't know what it is they just look so good but it might seem like a bit of an odd thing to say because you can easily change your colors and your tones and your contrast inside Lightroom and get your desired result but there's some about this camera and the colors that you get from it that just look 
amazing. I don't know if it's just a bit of a placebo effect because they use the same colour science as Leica, say what you will about that, but it just looks amazing, I love it. It's my favourite camera I've ever used, along with the original S5, I still love that camera as well. Most cameras you buy now are great at photography. We're at a point now where any camera you buy can take great photos because the technology has improved that quickly and filtered down into all of the lower end models as well that you can get great photos from any camera. And that means that when you're looking at buying or upgrading your camera, you can't really look past this because it is so much cheaper than all its competitors. It takes incredible photos, but all of the video features added on top of that as well make it pretty much the perfect hybrid camera. I would highly recommend this camera, even if you are looking at it just from a photography point of view, because it is brilliant. It has not let me down once. It feels well built, it's rugged, it's sturdy it feels good in the hand and you get great results from it. It is a lot of fun to use. I can't wait to keep using it and keep making things with it because it just makes me excited about going out and creating things. And that's what you want from a camera. You want it to be enjoyable to use. If you don't enjoy using your camera, chances are you're not gonna go out and use it. So um, yeah, that's the S5 II. It is great for photos, I love it. Um, let me know what camera you use. Are you thinking of buying the S5 II? Do you already own the S5 II? Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments. Come and say hello and I shall see you in the next video.